Good morning. Welcome to Pine Lake Covenant Church on this Easter morning. I am Nancy, one of the pastors on the team, and it's so good to be with you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Friends, I invite you to have your Bible or the Bible app close by as we read scripture and celebrate Jesus this morning. Kairos kids will have a fun lesson in just a few moments. So until then, let's dance and sing and praise Jesus for who he is. Let's pray together and read scripture. Let's start out with our friend Izzy Jones reading from the word of God. Good morning. My name is Izzy. Today we celebrate the most pivotal event in human history. Here's how it happened thousands of years ago, recorded in the Gospel of Luke. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 8. Christ the Lord is risen to
morning, TLCC. My name is Tiffany Farsad Schlatter, and this is my husband, Jason Schlatter. Please join us in a moment of prayer for this Easter Sunday. All right, let's pray, guys. Uh, Father in heaven, we want to thank you so much for this special Sunday that we get to commemorate together, as this is the time that we remember the reason that we gather at all. Uh, because you solidified our faith on the day that your son rose from the grave. And so, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for everything that you are to us and for giving us this reason. And we pray that this time together is blessed and that the words that are shared in this time resonate with us all. And I pray that we're all, all able to go in peace and love from your word here. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. If this is your first time joining us, or um, maybe you've been with us a few times and you're interested in connecting more with Pine Lake Covenant Church, we invite you to text the word WELCOME to the number 425-249-3838. And that'll just give us a chance to say hello, get to know you better, and share a little bit more about who we are and what we're about. Good morning, Kairos kids. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Today is such a great day to celebrate. Do you like to celebrate and get gifts like this? I know I sure do. Well, let's talk about the greatest gift and the greatest reason we have to celebrate. Jesus is alive. Yes, he is alive. Last week, we talked about Palm Sunday when Jesus was riding into Jerusalem and people waved their palm branches and threw down their coats to celebrate the Messiah, God's promised Savior, coming into Jerusalem. Now, they thought Jesus was going to be the big, mighty warrior king who would save them from their enemies. But really, Jesus wanted to save us from so much more. He wanted to save us from those wrong things we do that separate us from God. He wanted to save us from our sin. So Jesus taught his disciples as much as he could during that last week. He washed their feet. He shared a meal with them. He taught them new ways of being. And unfortunately, he died on the cross just as it said he would. And after he died, his friends took his body down and they placed him in a tomb and covered him with spices and cloths. And then they rolled a big stone in front of the tomb. And then they were sad. They didn't understand what had happened. Even though Jesus had said he was going away, they, they just didn't understand. And on the third day, Mary Magdalene and some of her friends went to the tomb so they could put more spices on Jesus. And this story is in all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And here's what it says in John chapter 20. Mary stood outside the tomb crying and she was so sad. And she looked in and she saw that the stone was rolled away and that Jesus wasn't there. And then Angel said, woman, why are you crying? She said, they've taken my Lord away. I don't know where he is. She was just so sad. No reason to celebrate yet. And then someone asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? And she thought he was the gardener. And she said, if you've taken him away, will you tell me where he is? And Jesus said to her, Mary. He called out her name and immediately she recognized his voice and she turned to him and exclaimed, Rabbani, which means teacher. She was amazed because there he was alive, not dead. He was alive in front of her. And he said, go tell your friends, go tell your brothers and sisters, tell them that I am alive. And that is a reason for us to celebrate because Jesus is stronger than even death. And he was that final sacrifice that we now can approach God, the throne of grace, that we have a way into heaven when we trust Jesus, that he lived and died and rose again. When we believe that he can take away our sins, he does that and we are made new. We are a new creation and invited into eternal life with Jesus. And Jesus, Jesus now is alive. And that is one of the greatest things that we can celebrate, that we know Jesus, we get to walk every day with him, and we can tell other people about him. Just as Mary went and told her other brothers and sisters, we can tell our brothers and sisters, our friends, our other family, whoever we see, we can share that Jesus is alive and we can celebrate together. 
Isn't that amazing, friends? Let's pray together this morning. I've opened up my key ring that will pray for the world, that more people would know Jesus and celebrate who he is. Ready? Let's wave, wave some fingers up here and up here, wave and wiggle and clap them together. Bring them in. Jesus, thank you so much for this reminder, for this day that we celebrate that you gave your life, but you didn't stay dead. Jesus, you are alive. We celebrate that. We dance, we sing, we read your word. We trust in you. Lord, help us take that message to all of our friends and family to tell other people that you are alive. Jesus, you are good and we love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen, friends. We also have a new remember verse this month that's going to just help us remember that Jesus is alive. So here's some friend, a friend to share that with us now. Hi, my name is Kai Wilkes. Today's remember verse is from 1 Peter 1, 3 in the message. Let's say this together. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we've been giving a brand new life and have everything to live for, including a future in heaven, and the future starts now.
Hi, my name is Ivan Judson, and I'm a member of the leadership team here at Pine Lake Covenant Church. Before we turn our hearts to pray for our offering, I'd like to say thank you for your generous support of the mission of God through PLCC. And as you consider giving, you should know there's several ways that you can give. You can give online at plcc.org slash give. You can text any amount to 725-444-9494. Or you can send a check or drop it off at the church. Drop-off times are Monday through Thursday, 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. And again, thank you for your generous support of all the things that we're trying to do here at PLCC. Let us pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you for the provision that you give us, for the grace that you bestow upon us, the things we earn and we don't earn, the things that we do and we don't realize that we've done. We thank you for the way you set our foot upon a firm foundation. And over the last 12 to 16 months, as we've, as we've worked together as a community who can't see and feel and touch and share in person, we've embraced the pandemic and the, and the distributed mode that we've had to work and worship in. And we find ourselves excited to see the spring. We find ourselves excited to see what you have before us. Lord, take what we have to give and multiply it. Show us where to put the resources you've blessed us with in a way that aligns us to your mission for Pine Lake, for your impact in the community and those around us. Bless those who give and bless those who participate. Give us all a heart to share. We ask these things in your son's name. Amen. To me, Easter means hope. Forgiveness. Hope. Joy. He is risen. Friends and family. Love. Celebrate. For me, Easter secures a future destiny. East. Easter. We are the Bachmans, and Easter brings us joy. And for me, Easter is full of hope in what's to come. He makes all things new. Happy Easter! Today's reading is from John chapter 11, verses 17 through 27. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who has come to the world. Good morning, everyone. Blessed Easter to you. We've already said it, but let's say it again. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. You know, we look forward to saying these words, repeating them together on Easter Sunday. It's an important time to declare what is true about our faith. 
But you know, I've been reflecting on those words this week, and I realized that the words, he is risen, don't have impact unless we say the words that come before that. He is dead. The Savior is dead. There was a real death. There were the cries of people who loved him. There was a body that was wrapped for burial. There was a graveside. He is dead. He was dead indeed. Now these may seem very strange words to begin an Easter message with, but I would just encourage us to think that we cannot experience the joy and celebration of Easter without first facing the pain. And as we gather to celebrate the resurrection this Easter, we do so alongside the suffering of the cross and the shadow of a tomb. We hold on to the experiences of Good Friday and the stillness and waiting of Saturday as we come to Easter Sunday. Because to celebrate the joy, we've got to be honest about the pain. You know this for yourself. When someone you love has died, it's not enough to just have warm thoughts or sentimental sayings, even just to repeat that Jesus is risen. Because this is the place where truth matters most. Is Jesus really who he said he is when you stand at a graveside, at a bedside of someone in pain? Many of you who know that kind of anguish, this past year, someone you love, I've been there myself this past week as my mom entered into hospice care. And for many of you this past year, for whatever reasons, have brought pain and loss even for some of you this past week. And I know that it's hard to stand in Easter joy when you have heard that the cancer has returned or that the mental health concerns have just grown and gotten worse or when that phone call comes that says your loved one has died. So it's in the death of Good Friday and the darkness of Saturday that we allow the joy of Easter to sink in more fully. I think that's when we're more open. In the stillness of Saturday, we're more open to the good news of Jesus Christ, that he is who he said he was. What does it mean for us to be Easter Sunday people, even in the shadows of Saturday? This is where we find Martha in this text that was read to you from John chapter 11. She's looking for Jesus. She's looking for hope, even in the middle of anguish. She is trying to make sense of the death, death of her brother in light of who Jesus was and is. And in Martha's story, we see ourselves as well. Part anguish, part faith, desperate for hope. Today we come to the end of this series we've been in called the I Am Statements of Jesus, where John takes us through seven statements that Jesus tells us who he is, ties it to the I Am Statements of God to say that I am who I am, this is Jesus. And today on this Easter Sunday, we hear him say, I am the resurrection and the life. And after speaking these words, Jesus acts. Jesus proves that what he is speaking is true. If you have your Bibles, either digitally or in print form, I encourage you to open them again to John chapter 11. We've been looking especially at verses 17 through 27. John 11 reveals this final sign of all the ways that John wants us to see who Jesus is, to believe in him. And in the middle of it is that statement, and all around the story is just commentary, proof, reflection that he is who he says he is. And in the setting for today's text, we're in the middle of a family tragedy. This beloved brother, Lazarus, had fallen ill. And as one of Jesus' closest friends, 
Mary and Martha as well send word to Jesus that the one you love is sick. And yet if you read earlier in John 11, we hear that Jesus remained where he was for several days. He delayed his journey to be with them. Even there, he hints to his disciples that something new is gonna come, that God's glory is going to be revealed. You know, when Jesus allows the world he loves to unravel, there is always anticipation, anticipation that God's glory will be revealed in new ways. So when Jesus does arrive, he hears that Lazarus has been dead for four days. Now this is an important detail in the story, this four days, because in the Jewish context, they, this pointed to the finality of Lazarus' death. Many Jews thought that the soul of a dead person remained near the body for three days in hopes of resuscitation. But no, not for Lazarus. Lazarus is truly dead. No hope of rescue, no hope of the kind of miracles we'd already seen Jesus do with the son of the widow of Nain, who he raised back to life, or Jairus' daughter, the synagogue leader, where Jesus spoke a word and she came back. No, Lazarus has been in the grave for four days. And later, Martha even reminds Jesus at the gravesite, there's gonna be the odor because this body is decaying. This is the ugly reality of death. It's gonna be evident to all because four days is equivalent to helpless and hopeless. So before we go to the end of the chapter, the resurrection part, let's sit with Martha. Let's journey with her as she walks, finds out what Jesus is going to say about all of this. We know the end of the story, but we, we want to walk with Martha. We want to feel the pain before we experience the joy. You know, Martha takes actions when she hears that Jesus is nearby. She goes out to meet him. And she goes out to meet him right as she is with her mixture of hope and doubt. All her emotions are out there. You see, in their sorrow, Martha and Mary had been twice deserted. They'd been deserted in death when their brother had died and then deserted by their friend, the Lord, when he had not shown up when they wanted him to. And so the words that Mary speaks there in verse 21 are so poignant. Lord, Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. You know, implied in these statements of Martha are some pointed questions, perhaps even some accusations before Jesus. Where were you, Jesus? Where were you when we needed you most? I thought you loved my brother. I know you have power to change things, so why didn't you do it? Why didn't you save him from death? Even some of the neighbors who had gathered to mourn with Martha and Mary asked the same kinds of questions, knowing who Jesus was. Verse 37, it says, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Perhaps you have some of the same questions, the same even protests before God. Lord, if you had been here, if you really loved me, if you loved us, then why did this happen? Why does it seem that you desert us when we need you most? And it's even in these Easter Sunday celebrations, it's hard to make sense of what has happened to you, perhaps. What has happened to those that you love? But we can be encouraged by Martha's running out to meet Jesus just as she is. She is honest with him. She brings her whole self, her protests, her questions, but she also brings her faith. Because we read in the second part of verse 21 that Martha says, I know, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. She had seen Jesus' miracles in the past. She'd heard his teaching. She knew what he could do. And she'd become one of his closest supporters and dearest friends. But Jesus, 
He's, she says, Jesus, I know you have this unique connection to God. God is going to give you whatever you ask. And in response to Jesus' statement about her brother rising again, Martha again says what she knows. She speaks words of faith. I know he will rise again on the last day, she says. It is good to hear Martha's statements of belief, her deep convictions right alongside her doubts. It might be one of the most human speeches in all the Bible. Lord, if you had been here, and yet I know. So we can bring ourselves in the same way to Jesus, our deep convictions and our honest questions. We can be real about what we do believe and what we do not yet believe. And if you're in the midst of a season of pain and doubt, don't hesitate to run out and meet Jesus, to see, to let him hear you for where you are, to be real with him because he welcomes you as you are. And after Martha speaks these words of faith, speaking of the eventual resurrection of the dead in the last day, Jesus brings the words into the present. He says the ultimate truth about himself. Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He doesn't rebuke Martha. He later doesn't rebuke Mary when she says some of the same things. He just points to himself and brings the hope of future resurrection into the present, promising abundant eternal life that starts here and starts now. These are the words, and I want to unpack them just a little bit, that Jesus says, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. The second part of that, we could say, he who believes in me will live even though he dies. You know, in this statement, Jesus is speaking directly to Martha's situation. Her brother's in the grave. He's been there four days. But that is not the final word. Jesus says that faith in me means that you are brought back to life. Your body is brought back to life. This is a mind-boggling declaration of Jesus because he is saying that resurrection will reverse mortality. Even when the outer body wastes away and dies, it will be resurrected in the culmination of Jesus' kingdom. The body, our bodies, even though they die, will come back to life because resurrection reverses mortality. Paul talks about the same thing, that this is so pivotal to our life of faith as followers of Jesus. Because if mortality is not reversed through resurrection, then we are just pitiful fools. Hear how he describes it in 1 Corinthians 15. This is from the message. If corpses can't be raised, then Christ wasn't, because he was indeed dead. And if Christ weren't raised, then all you're doing is wandering about in the dark, as lost as ever. It's even worse for those who died, hoping in Christ and resurrection, because they're already in their graves. If all we get out of Christ is a little inspiration for a few short years, we're a pretty sorry lot. But the truth is, that Christ has been raised up, the first in a long legacy of those who are going to leave the cemeteries. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. And in saying that, he reverses mortality. Our bodies will rise again. Jesus also says, I am the life. I am life. Verse 26, whoever lives and believes in me will never die. What can that mean if we already know that there's a time we go to the grave? Well, the life that comes through believing in Jesus is a life that is not interrupted by physical death because the I am of life reverses death and eventually he'll remove all the sorrow and pains of death. And for those who are in Christ, as he says here, for those who believe in me, 
There is never a break in your relationship with God and your experience of God. Even death cannot separate you from them. Jesus is saying that our union with him means there's a continuity of life. To live is to know God, to be at one with God. To die, in this sense, is to be separated from God. And so those who claim Jesus as Lord will never truly die. There's never a millisecond when you are not going to be in saving connection with Jesus Christ. Jesus himself spoke of this kind of eternal life when he prayed for his followers in John 17, says this, now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. This is life and we are always experiencing eternal life if we are in Jesus Christ, not something that we get just in the future something we have now. In the most real sense, as, as William Barclay coined it, we are not on our way to death. We are on our way to life. The I am reverses the power of death even now. And after Jesus speaks these words, to, he says to Martha, do you believe this? Do you believe this? And here's where Martha makes a statement that we often forget to credit her with. We point to her busy body and so many aspects of her character, but she speaks words of commitment and words of deep belief in Jesus Christ, a threefold statement. You are the Messiah. You are the Christ. You are the anointed one. I know that. You are the son of God. You are divine, not just a man. And you are the one who is to come. You are the one who was prophesied about and has now come into the world. Je Jesus asks Mary, do you believe? And Mary says, yes, I do believe. If we went on to read the rest of John 11, we would see them going together to the tomb. And even there, when Jesus knows what is to come, when he has said, I am resurrection and life, he weeps with his friends. He sees the pain of death for Mary, for Martha, for the community that's gathered there. He feels the weight of it. And the scripture says not only did he weep, but he's moved, deeply moved, like a groan for what they are facing, for what he is facing. And yet at the tomb of Lazarus, we see the words of Jesus be given full proof. The power and the promise of what he had said to Martha is made real when he says, Lazarus, come forth. And out of the grave walks this man who had been dead for four days. Resurrection, life, the glory of God revealed right before their eyes. We too, as we consider resurrection and life, remind ourselves we are Easter people. And we ask ourselves the same question that Jesus asked Martha. Do you believe this? Do you believe what Jesus has said about himself? All the I am's that we have talked about, all the things that Jesus has told us about himself and has demonstrated by the way he acts. Do you believe what Jesus says about himself? Do you believe that his resurrection has forever, forever conquered the ravages of death and pain? You know, as much as that resurrecting Lazarus coming forth from a grave affirmed Jesus' power, we know that Lazarus later died. His body is again in the grave. Yes, he was snatched from death for a time, but Jesus, no, Jesus' resurrection is different because when he was released from the grave by the power of God, he remains alive forever. Those first witnesses to the resurrection, those women who came to the tomb, the disciples who ran to the tomb, they were forever changed because they saw Jesus 
with them, speaking, eating, talking, and he is alive today as much as he was on that first Easter morning. So you and I are invited to be Easter people, to, re to believe and accept those I am words of Jesus. I am, he says, I am still resurrection. I am still life. What does it mean for us to be Easter people who still live in Saturday's shadows? I hope for you, wherever you are this Easter day, that you can even stand at the edge of a grave without being in denial about death. You can cry out. You can feel the pain of separation. You can bring your doubts, your questions to Jesus. We can embrace the emptying part, even as we move to the filling. Because Easter doesn't ask us to ignore the pain, the death. Instead, Easter raises our eyes up to a truth that is eternal. Raise your eyes up to the one who said, I am resurrection and the life. Raise your eyes up to the one who stands with you at the grave, who weeps with you but yet says, there's never a moment where you will not be connected to me in life that is eternal and begins right now. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Do you believe this? Let's pray together. Lord, in the victory of your resurrection, we stand and in the recognition of our own frailty and impending death perhaps we stand with you recognizing that you have said i am resurrection i am life thank you for the realness of this good news we don't have to ignore the grave we don't have to ignore the pain you meet us there and you tell us who you are. May we believe it and live into it in confidence. We pray this in the name of the resurrected Jesus. Amen. The moon and stars, they wept. The morning sun was day. The Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, His blood poured out for us, the weight of every curse was broken.
sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb has overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb has overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb has overcome. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb has overcome. Receive this blessing on this Easter Sunday. Go into the week as Easter people, because the one who said, I am resurrection and life, is still alive. May you go in the confidence of his presence with you in each and every moment. Amen. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us this Easter Sunday. My name's Kim, and I'm on staff here at Pine Lake Covenant Church. And if you're newer to our church, we would love to connect with you. So just grab your phone and text the word WELCOME to 425-249-3838. We have a Women's Spring Zoom party coming up on April 13th at 7.30 p.m. And this is for all women that are high school age and up. This is a fun time to make new friends and, of course, invite other friends to join you. Now, we are asking that you sign up ahead of time by April 10th, so just go to plcc.org slash party to sign up. The Global 6K is on May 22nd, and you can walk or run from wherever you are. And this is also a great time to invite your friends to join you. We even have a $15 discount code you and your friends can use for a limited time. So just go to plcc.org slash Global 6K to get your discount code and to register. Oh, hey, you're still here. Oh, we don't have Encore today. No. Enjoy your day. Happy Easter. Tina Fu.